Lord Games Twitch channel. I am your host tonight for painting with the Haunted Holler, aka Daniel or Dr. Dice, as we call it. And in audio today, we have my man Bake. What are you doing? He's quiet, folks. He doesn't want to talk. Uh oh, uh oh. He don't want to talk. Goes. There he is. Are you echoing? No, I. My microphone is doing some goofy stuff when I'm muted. Yeah. So last week, <clears throat> Bake, do you remember remember what what happened last week? Uh, we were gonna uh, 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 Dale join the Patreon, and so we have a dragon now. Yes, we have a dragon, and this is the dragon. This is the, the dragon, Wiz Kids Dragon. I got as much primer off of it as I can. We've got issues though. If you look right here, I, I made an eraser pointy thingy so I can do some stuff with it. But uh, you got these gaps right in here, gaps in the wings. Uh, we got mold lines up in this area here. We got mold lines down the chest. So this is the. If you want a model to look really well, you got to spend a little bit of time cleaning it up. So that's what we're going to do tonight is work on cleaning up models. I don't. I, I like this plastic better than I like the plastic from Reaper, but I still prefer the Reaper, uh, not Reaper, but Citadel plastic over all of it. So, so first thing we're going to do. Let's see here. I just got a message. Let's see what it said. Probably Ultra Magnus yelling at me. Yeah, that's it. He's yelling at me. <coughs> you know, Dale could jump in here at Twitch chat tonight and <laughs> chit chat with us if he wants. And I got another model I'm working on. You want to see it? Yeah, what you got? 3D printed. Oh. <laughs> you like that? Now yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at. Is that not derpy? It, it had messed up in the resin printer, so I might have to create me a. And then we got line right there. If you look in the cape, see the cape right there. What do you think about that? That is a that's a fourteen hour print. Does this helmet come off? No, but it's screwed up. <laughs> so, so right there, it's gapped up. So we're gonna have to use putty or something to straighten that out. But I think it looks pretty cool. I'm printing him again to see if, because I had some support failure right in here, and I had some support failure over here, and right at this is why this all ganked up. Oh, look, it's Dale, who could be in Discord with us, but is choosing not to be. Look, Dale, what I have in my hands. Let's see what he says, if we even get a response. There he is. No, he's there. But his typing has been crummy all day. His typing has been crummy. He has it feeling crummy. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to work on the chest plates. So, got to get up in here and start scrape, scrape, scraping away. Oh, man, I need to get this PCI card. So, how, how's this looking? This is on my uh, older desktop computer. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's going to get in Discord with us. The uh, yeah, the cameras look the same, so that's good. Okay, uh, I'm running at 52% CPU. Uh oh, do we have a Dale? Uh, I heard it. I heard it. Heard a noise. Oh, we've got a Dale in here. Can't hear you, buddy. Yeah, we can't hear you, Dale. Trying to activate our cameras. I don't want it to do that. No. Why is it trying to do that? Oh. Oh. All right, there we go. Now, Start. now we got you. There we are. There we go. Hey, right, Dale. Good. Hey, Dale. Hey, all. 
Sorry, I automatically hit the video thing whenever I join a channel just to turn my camera on because uh -oh. then it's a light on the camera and I know it's all working. Okay, I understand. Well, you are streaming live with us tonight in the uh, in the chat, so I mean, so people can hear you on the the stream. So, welcome to the stream tonight. We are cleaning up this young dragon, this young red dragon. Trying to get some of the uh, mold lines off of here, and we're gonna do a little bit of sanding while we're at it. That's actually a pretty nice looking model. I like that. It's a very pretty little dragon. Yeah. Um, I did talk to uh, Stephen Chenault uh, last week, and he is going to sweeten the pot on the auction, and uh, he is going to throw in a player's handbook and a Monsters and Treasure for the auction when we auction this guy off uh, for the, um, just want to go to the Wounded Warriors and stuff, so... We're, uh, he couldn't do a Castle Keepers because he said they only have like five copies left in stock until they get another print run. So, <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. I was talking about that yesterday afternoon. I guess the, he's got stacks and stacks of books tucked away someplace, and I'm trying to get him to tell us what they are and how we can get our hands on them. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll be able to get your hands on those books for a while. Because they're probably older books. Wouldn't want them. Wouldn't want them. Bad rules. You know, old rules. <laughs> Sorry, it's a running joke around here. I've got, uh, me, me and Chuck have been threatening to come down there and uh, hang out at the warehouse. So. Alright, let's see if we get that. So, uh, I, I do cut my own sanding blocks here and these are actually cut from fingernail foamy the foam top fingernail files oh the really fine ones yeah the ones that you're that have the foam in it that contour ah and I drop it that can have it my wife is giving me grief this evening She's trying to get the new PC card installed and you need to get up here and spend time with us because you're, you're getting ready to do your stream. And I won't see you for the rest of the night. Dang. It's my wife impersonation. But that's not really how she sounds. I was about to see. <clears throat> she might get upset with them. Yeah. Let's see here. Heard a Discord message pop up. Uh, let's see here. It is my son. I need to go my go cube. You said I get it if I take my dishes to the sink. What? Hold it. Dang kids. Yep. Uh, I get to go to Charlotte this weekend. What are we gonna do up there? Uh, it's our. We're going to spend time there because of our anniversary was earlier this month and we didn't get to do anything so we get to we're going to go to ikea <laughs> we don't have yep. a local local ikea so we're going to buy some uh buy we saw this thing that we want for a kitchen that pretty much adds like a whole rack of cabinets for like eight hundred dollars we're going to try to fit it in the back of the minivan what sucks is i'm gonna to have to put that thing together What mama wants, mama gets. <laughs> yeah, eight eight hundred. That sounds like a lot for. I thought IKEA was cheap. It is. It's a really big piece. So. Oh okay. So some of these mold lines I'm not going to be able to get very well. I'm getting... How well do those uh, great compared to like Citadel? The what? How well do they scrape compared what, to the plastic? Yeah. It's it's still a little gummy like Reaper models. Is it? I mean it's not as gummy as a Reaper model, but I mean I prefer these over Reaper models. They have a lot more definition to them. So you can probably hear it. Let's see here. You hear that? Yeah. So it's 
still a little gummy. Or are we going to name this dragon, Dale? Well, it's funny you should ask because uh, I am uh, not only doing a physical purge of my house of towers of paper, but um, I also oh, accompanying that had done a bit of a purge this afternoon on old uh, campaign files, and I actually found a text file with uh, a list of about a dozen dragon names from some official part of D&D, so it kind of had me thinking about it. Give me a second, and I'll dig that up for you. Okay. It's weird. The names are really weird, but they're semi-official ones. So. Semi-official D&D names? Who would ever think of a thing? So, uh... Okay, so they're so, from, from wizards.com. Uh, and that's Worms of the North Archive. So, uh, we have, uh... And, uh... Every time I encounter something that says this is an official dragon's name or something, they're long, multi-syllabic things. Like, nothing is ever as simple as smog. Or something like I that. We so the first Bob. one, no. <laughs> as the laughing worm is Zunderazilim, or Voragra Hamanthar, or Valamara Dechi, or Tostan Elerthmog, or Thelagert. That's an easy one, Thelagert. I like that one for uh, a name. How about we just call him but, Frank? Frank? Yeah, well, that might be not going quite far enough, but I think we could find a. Uh, um, a good name for him. Right. How about we take uh, Frank uh, Stiles and call him Fries? What? Sorry. I'm just being silly right now. <laughs> I'll yeah, let you allowed. pick the... Since you're the one that gave me the idea to do this, I will let you pick the official name of the dragon that we put <laughs> in the auction. So... So oh, what's his color scheme again? He's gonna be red. That's all you need to know for now. I got it. Number two for you to choose from if you want in on it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're actually, I'm going to be uh, trying a new painting style with this model. Aren't you fancy? Trying to be. Trying to be. Oh. Okay, how do you like um, Balagos? B A L A G O S. The Flying Flame. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. The Flying Flame. The one that I like is, is the Sunset Flame, and it's Galadaros. G A L A D A E R O S. That sounds more like a, a good dragon. Is this going to be a good dragon or an evil dragon? He's, he's going to be a civilized dragon. Okay. Um, so that actually helps in, me with the painting. In my, world, in, in my world, dragons aren't measured by alignment, but by their their level of civilization. So, uh, because they think so differently, right? Like, for instance, a less than civilized dragon might cooperate you in defeating an enemy by just stomping all over all the combatants on the field and killing them all because that's what pleases him and it meets you know what what you've been asking for a very civilized cooperative sort of humane dragon would know what you mean but create the least amount of damage by finding the uh, opposition's leader and dropping him from 200 feet in this plate mail so ah. only life is consumed but it still again meets your requirements okay so he could be evil or he not evil. He can be civilized or not civilized. Uh -huh. The more civilized he is, the more cooperative he's going to be. The less civilized he is, the more he's out to gain whatever he wants, whatever he can get out of it. And that could mean being civilized just long enough and then killing everyone and taking what he wants. Right? Oh, dragons. Say hello, <laughs> hello, Don't fiddle with the dragon. If you wonder what that whining sound is in the background, guys, it's my 3D printer going. Sounded like you were beating a five-year-old. Yeah. Good thing she didn't walk in when I was doing an impersonation of her. 
<laughs> see, bait thinks mm. it's funny. Mm -mm. Uh oh, see, look at that mold line right there. Just right up the wing. Now, I will tell you, they are getting to be kind of like Citadel, is they're starting to be able to hide mold lines very well. I've noticed that on the latest Citadel models, uh, they are hiding those mold lines pretty dang good. They're working it in with the uh, actual sculpt. Yeah, they're getting better. Yeah. Were you a Dragonlance fan? Oh, there's the dog. Tail. Dragonlance? Dragonlance. Oh, I don't, uh, I think I've heard of that, but not sure what it is. You know what Dragonlance is. Is that a game or something? Dragonlance was a setting in the Forbidden Realms for AD&D, &D, wasn't it? Uh, well, it's a set, it, it's its own, it's Kryn, it's, it's its own oh, realm. Right. Yeah. But I thought it was all, it was published under the, no, I guess you're right, no, it wasn't published under Forbidden for, uh, yeah, okay. Came out about the same time as the realms. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, it was the other, like you know, you had that plus Forgotten Realms. Then you had Greyhawk, which Greyhawk kind of evolved into Forgotten Realms. Am I right? Can't remember. Um, you and, <laughs> then you had smaller. And then there's had, Eberron. I'm not sure where Eberron is in the pantheon of, of times. Uh, I don't even know anymore. It's crazy. So that T uh, TSR Wizards just put out that new Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which pretty much is like uh, the new version of Unearth Arcana. And they they didn't want to call it Unearth Arcana because I guess it's got too much condemnation with Gary Gygax. I guess I don't know, but like so supposedly I'm getting on my political bandwagon here. Uh, it was supposed to fix a lot of their politically correctness. They supposedly that Wizards was going to address all this political correctness in it, right? Uh, that they've missed out on in D and D. And you know how they did it? They just said, um, "It's a game. Play however you want to play." That's it. They do it. Yeah. the opportunity to publish a book and make a few bucks off it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, they've added some stuff to it, but I, I mean, I'm not running out to buy it. I did get to run 5th edition this weekend with my Cubs, uh, Boy Scouts, actually, because my Cub Scouts were with us on the Boy Scout trip. And uh, they were, like, begging, please run Dungeons and Dragons. Please run Dungeons and Dragons. So I ran D&D for them. I'm not calling you Akela. Huh? No, it wasn't the Akela camp out. Um, it was our We Below's Cold Weather camp out. And, uh, which is, um, where we introduced the We Below's Twos, or that or Hour of Light We to the, um, uh, the troop, because that's where they're going to be next year. Uh, I need my lighter. Where's my lighter? Lighter. Sorry, y'all are seeing the hair. Twitch is Sorry, doing a real crap job tonight, man. It's stalling out lots. Anyone else having trouble with it? Oh, uh, Twitch? No. <clears throat> I don't seem to be. There's some new guy at the microphone with shorter hair and, like, no facial hair. Who's that? <laughs> no, my hair's still long. I just, I just shaved. I don't believe you had a widow's peak last week, mister. No, no, hold on, look. See, it's up in the top knot. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. I'm, I'm man -bone. I can't, because Twitch is like brain dead tonight. Yeah, now I shaved my face, though. I will tell you that. So I'm getting a little fuzzies off of here. Like the stuff where I scraped. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take my little rubber thing that I made, which is pretty much an eraser uh, with uh, that I put in a um, pencil sharpener. Okay. Okay. What were you scrubbing the model with, Daniel? Um, I was scraping it with an X-Acto knife, 
And then this right here is just a, a piece of uh, emery board that uh, that foam emery board. That foam emery board. Okay. Yeah, okay. I cut it. I usually it, take and cut it. It looks like a piece of foam core of some sort. Yeah, it's it's foamy, but it's not foam core. So, so here, this is the part here. that's going to suck. Is trying to fill in these cracks. I'm going to do a quick reboot um, just to see if I haven't got some sort of memory leak, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay. All right, buddy. So supposedly this stupid driver is not wanting to work. So mad. So trying to fill this into the crack without losing a lot of definition up here. I already feel like I'm losing definition. Okay. Take the bristly brush. Oh, that's the wrong thing. This guy right here. Okay. There we go. It helps a little bit. To get your person situated at work? Not really. <laughs> uh oh. It it finally came down to I don't know how to help you. Yeah, you do. She wants a discount. No, I. You can call my boss. Like you have all these problems and you're not willing to try any of them, so I can't do anything else for you. Oh, I know those people. Yeah. I've been there. It's like, here's your diagnosis. And, uh, sorry. Just can't reason with some folks, but what do you do? I don't know, man. Just don't know. She's this little guy here. He's a little stiff. That's what she said. Ooh. So I, I uh, took and smoked me a turkey. Yesterday. Talked it already? Well, I did it yesterday as a practice run for next week. Oh. Yeah, it tasted really good. How long are you going to eat turkey? <laughs> uh, dude, uh, turkey is per weight higher in protein than chicken or beef. So, uh, for me, I could eat, eat it all the time because it's probably what the doctor would like. Uh-oh. Somebody's back. It's leaking the memories. Well, that's just weird that that would come back on like that. What, the camera? Oh, with my microphone already turned on and connected to the, uh, to the oh. channel. But interestingly, even after I shut everything down just before I hit restart, I could still hear you guys chattering away in the background, so something was definitely yeah. wedged. Yeah. I'm just going to fire up the Twitch and see if it's proved, improved. Okay, I think that's looking good. I want to go too overboard with this. But I do want it to look good. Here's the problem with this stuff is trying to get it into the cracks to begin with before it dries out. You know, I shouldn't really worry too much because most of this won't even be seen. Oh, there's that too, yeah. Wonderful Tamiya putty. So what are you uh, patching up there now? So I'm trying to fill in some of the bigger, bigger cracks from where uh, they glued it together. So, okay, I got you. so this is the one thing I do like about Reaper models 
So these are whiz kids. Reapers will send them to you unglued. See, like right here, there's a seam line here, but you can't tell it because it's already, you know, it's so tight in, tightly put in. But if you look right here, you can see where a, there is a gap. Now, a lot of that actually probably won't even show up, you know, um, after I put the primer coat on. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. So what I'm doing is I put. No, so it's disconcerting because you know it's there, right? It, yeah, and that's what bothers me. And so the Tamiya putty, this is what this stuff is, is um, really cool stuff. It dries fairly quick, um, but you gotta get it in there. Like I want to put some right here, but I. I, I push as much of it in as I can in the crack, and then I take a, a stiff bristle brush over it to get any excess out. So, take a little rubber thing that I made and use it to shove some of it into the crack. And then before it dries, we just come over here with this brush. Try to get as much of it off of here so it doesn't leave a lot in the definition. Like in the lines and stuff in the crevices. Talking to a friend who has a friend last night who's, uh, who does the uh, 3D printing. And so he got into the conversation of materials and stuff. And now I have, just watching you for five minutes, now I have all kinds of extra questions about, well, if they come some of them in parts, then can you use the same glue for like PLA versus resin? I bet that's a whole other rabbit hole to oh, jump yeah. down. So, uh, so the glue that you would use on this type of model oh, is no, going, no, no. Well, I don't even start, man. Yeah. It's, it's like that would be a crazy discussion. I wouldn't understand. No, that. no, I can get into just, some glue. Like I say, I know nothing about miniatures or painting them other than I like moving them around on a table. Yeah. And, uh, that yeah. That was part of our discussion last night because he said, well, just send me a, you know, a file or something of what you want printed and I'll get Stu to print it off. And I said, no, well, I don't want to do that because, you know, <laughs> some of the things that I want to print off are like, you know, probably going to cost a lot of materials and time. And I said, you know, I'm looking at things like, uh, like dragons the size of what you've got there or bigger that so I can print off. And learn how to paint and then just have them around the house is like sculpture you know so i printed this today and i still got to clean it up some but like this right here took 14 hours to print but exactly. but, but it only took 30 cent in material so but so yeah. so when i print for people i charge by the hour because you are using my printer for uh, time spent. So for filament prints, I charge about a buck fifty an hour. For resin prints, I don't charge that much because half the time they don't turn out. So I have to print them a couple times. But you know, I, I I'm getting to a point where I don't like my resin printer anymore. So it could be that I just have a cheaper resin printer. So. Now, did you print that little fellow that you're holding there with the gun on his back? Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, the. Uh, ma we like the little feel on that. What's how's that printed? That's that's resin. It's printed with resin. Printed with resin. And I had some failure of supports underneath the chin here. That's why his helmet's a little messed up. Yeah, that's why not why not signed on, so I was listening to that. Yeah. And then right here. Uh, the front end of the gun got messed up because of the support. So, but now, why does that kind of issue happen? Man? What was that? Why does, why does something like that happen? Like a failure in support or whatever it was. You uh, just like the the material didn't cure right as the the light hit it. You know, or when it was the way a, a resin printer works is it takes and projects the light. Um, a layer by layer uh, in certain patterns to build upon each other with the UV resin. And so 
Um, it could be that it glitched out. Hold on. And, this is yeah. Hold on. This is resin that's like UV cured. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to stop you there. Oh, Go it's ahead. okay. But it's just mainly what probably happened was like uh, a certain area didn't draw out right as it was printing and it messed up the support area and uh, didn't continue to print it. So the um, I'm reprinting it right now. Uh, to see, and this isn't even the best quality that I could do either. If you look, like right in here, you can see the lines from the helmet and stuff like that uh, in the helmet. Um, now, there is a newer version of my printer that's got a builder, bigger build plate, and it's higher definition. It's actually a 4K screen. This is a standard HD screen, so... But, I mean... I only paid like two hundred dollars for the printer when it first came out, and uh, you can get this current printer that I'm using for like a hundred fifty bucks. Sometimes you can catch it on sale for for like a hundred and twenty five. So it's not the latest and greatest. Well, that's, that's pretty inexpensive, though. Yeah. Really. Yeah, and, and the, that's the yeah. other thing that mystifies me about it. It's like you know, it's like I can talk the lingo. I understand what the individual bits and peeps, pieces are when people are talking about 3D printers, but honestly, I don't understand what the difference between them is in terms of quality or expense or yeah. what's more preferred for what yeah. job. So that's the stuff that yeah, I was getting hung up on. Yeah, the filament printers that you hear in the background, that's the thing that uses stuff like Weed Eater Line. So that's what you're hearing run right now. So this guy right here, though, I'm going to have to okay. carry cure it like you can look right there where it's messed up on the end of his gun it's not a full circle but i'm gonna have to put him out in the lot tomorrow and let him sun cure um to finish his curing process but i like to clean them up before i do that so it's not as brittle so i get most of the the resin off of here and then um cure it and then i can i can go ahead and primer it so I mean, but it looks pretty good, though. I like it. I think it turned out fairly well for my printer. Um, a friend asked me to print it for him. This is a free model somebody did. And you can see how flexible it is until it actually sits out in the sun for a while. Um, because it, it'll it'll eventually cure into a lot harder of a of a resin. So that what happens is the chemical reaction causes heat. And the heat's what causes the curing process. So, and that's where we, that's our issues. So right now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to have to bust out the airbrush and primer the model real quick. So um, now my airbrush, I've uh, got new needles for it. And I want to talk about needles on your airbrush for a minute. Let me. So here's my airbrush, my Chinese Master Series. It's a G233 uh Pro, I guess is what it is, and this is the, got the old needle in it right now. So, the what we would do is I'm gonna put the larger needle in it since we're primering. Let me move the camera down a little bit here so we can, so I don't have to be too much in the way here. So yeah, AR15Discounts.com, not sponsored. Uh, so you pull the back end off, you release the chuck, pull the needle out. Then you take the front end off of it. And the front end's in two parts. This is the needle tip guard right here. And this is the outer nozzle. And so what happens in an airbrush is the little tiny hole right here is what the needle comes through. And that's actually what the paint comes through. And this entire area around here is where the air comes out. And what happens is the air comes out, it creates a, a siphon effect and pulls the paint out of this little tiny hole that's why you've got to have your your stuff really good so um you gotta unscrew it i'm gonna wrench here and this needle isn't done for it's still usable but i don't want to use it anymore because i ordered new sets so, yeah so well sure when you get the new stuff it's like a set of strings for your guitar or whatever. Yeah. It's going to give you slightly better yeah. everything. Yep. 
It's hard watching um, Twitch when it keeps lagging out and listening to you talk as you're sitting there yeah. telling me about all the parts of yeah. the uh, of the uh, airbrush, and I'm still watching you trim bits of dragons and warriors. Yeah, sorry. Um, now the uh, 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 yeah, we had a sink from time to time. Yeah, that's usually um, Bake doesn't really watch the video too much he does his own thing and just talks to me um yeah oh wait somebody's got a comment green uh green loot Lutner. yeah this is to me a putty so i buy it at hobby lobby because you can get a 40 percent coupon and um this putty i'm almost out um it's about two dollars after the coupon so it's a pretty good putty. I enjoy it. It stinks. It's the type of putty that will get you high if you have it. Now, this little thing right here in my fingers is the actual nozzle of the airbrush. Um, and the reason what happened with all the the nozzles that I had beforehand um, on this airbrush, it came with three uh, different sizes and stuff. I dropped it, and then the other one just got bent. Um, I want to show you what I... I uh, end up doing so these Chinese uh, when the problems with Chinese um, airbrushes is that the needles do not come polished so if you see how I don't know if you, this picks it up very well that this end of the needle is fairly dull but this end of the needle isn't um, I use uh, this material that I usually use to polish resin with but it's these micro cloths here and I throw the needles in a Dremel, and I end up polishing uh, from coarsest to finest uh, with these little polishing cloths. And it actually gets rid of all the burrs and puts a mirror shine on the needle. So the new needle has a mirror uh, shine to it, if you can tell. Let's see here. If you can tell there compared to this end where it's kind of dull. So this is the point five, and so the first thing you would do is you take this out here, and you have the cap, and then you have the needle nozzle. So you want to put the nozzle in first, and you don't want to cross thread it because that would be bad. There's a small little gasket on there. Now, when those gaskets wear out, a lot of the old timers use beeswax to make a seal because you're always, it'll last for a while. See, now I hadn't tried this one. The other one went in fine. This one seems like it's going to be a little tight. These aren't, these are made for a different brand of airbrush that are made the same way mine is. So I've been precurious that this isn't going to work, but I think it is. So we're going to put that in right there. Okay, and we're going to tighten it. We don't want to over tighten it or it'll strip it out. That's good. So let's drop the needle in. So we, sl we push down a little bit on the trigger. And we start sliding the needle in here. And then you'll watch the needle shoot through the cup. There, and into the hole. And what's going on here? Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Let's loosen it up. Okay. Huh. It doesn't want to go any further. That's fine. It doesn't have to go. It just has to come out. Okay. So let's tighten the chuck up down here. There we go. As long as that moves... And we'll be able to spray paint 
so this this is a larger needle so it's going to put out more paint so therefore it's going to prime quicker and clear coat quicker Yeah, it's barely sticking out the tip here. Right. And then we'll take the new, and I can tell the difference because this one has a little copper on it here where I've had to sand it down. So this is the new one. So I'll put this over here. And we put this on here. And then we put the guard on. In case I drop it, because I've been known to do that. So now I'll just put all the parts that we need to put up back in here. I will drop this piece and this piece in here for right now. I've got to clear coat anyway the all these Necrons later, so I don't want to have to put you all through that boredom. <laughs> no, it's interesting. It, it, uh, it doesn't look far off of what uh, the uh, tattooers work with, you know. It's uh, yeah. weirdly similar. Well, that's what the uh, my, my paint mixer is actually a tattoo ink mixer. I use for mixing paint. Yeah. I got a quick release. This right here allows me to change my air pressure. Um, but yeah, the thing I used to mix my paint with is a tattoo ink mixer. So I'm gonna shoot a little bit of paint thinner in here and see if this works. Now I've got one of those. Uh, so we're quick good. Release ones as well. Yeah. Uh, is there, do they make an add-on, like a quick release with a, like a gauge on it, so you know how much air you're pushing through? No, that you should be controlling that through your, your, uh, air compressor. Do you not have, do you have an air compressor without a tank, or what? No, I've got one with a tank, um, but if I set it, you know, if I set it lower, it just keeps going and going, which annoys the people downstairs. Yeah, I don't care. You know how it sounds in mine. So let's see here. So I usually put my finger over the end and flow a little bit of air through it. Um, that helps out a lot with the... Uh... Come on. There we go. Uh, we're starting to splatter. Let's... Uh... Let me work the needle a little bit here. What the crap? There we go. So this is what takes forever. Especially when it's gray on gray. Ugh. Come on now. I know you know what's going on. This is the part of getting it started. It's annoying as crap. Sometimes you have to prime it. Okay, we know the air is back flowing. Let's put a little bit of... Actually, what I'm going to do... Let's <laughs> take a little bit of this Mephisti on red and mix it with the primer. So I can see where it's going. And we'll put a little bit of thinner in it, too. I think I might need to up my pressure. Yeah, at least it'll kind of show you where you're spraying. Yeah. Boop. A little bit thinner. And then my paint mixing brush. Look at my dirty paint water there. You love it? Filthy. Yep. Hmm. Come on. Come 
area. I see a spot where I missed. Come on, though. Yeah, this is the best part because it's so loud. It's like being in a machine shop. It's a uh, good opportunity to remind people uh, about the history of pink. About the history of what? Of pink. Paint. Pink. No. Ink. Missed a spot with my scraping here. So here's the thing is when you start spray painting it, you're like, oh, I missed a spot. Need to tell them about the history of Patreon. <laughs> the nine o'clock already. It's eight forty-six. <laughs> the real long shot. Utensil Zinc and Lurks and Jeffy Onyx and of course Dale. Hello, hello. The old, the old copy paste razzle dazzle. Well, well, well. So, my producer here has just linked in my Patreon and my Facebook. So, Tell what the Patreon? Huh? Tell them when it gets them. Well, the Patreon at four, $3 gets you access just to the Discord where you can send me messages from here and there and everywhere. And, have me answer questions for you from time to time. Uh, and it also gets you in here when we are painting, so you can ask questions as we paint. The uh, $5 actually gets you access to uh, any early recipes that I may come up with, so you can go ahead and get that built, uh, get that list shopping list done, so you can make the recipe along with me. And then at the $30 level, it means I'm going to either give you an hour of my time a month, so I can show you and help you uh, with your own painting needs. Or I'm going to uh, paint a model for you. Something small, maybe about the size of this dragon. Uh, you send it to me and uh, with return shipping. And I will paint it and send it right back to you. That's what you get at the Patreon. I know I'm very interesting, guys. That's just why everybody's in here and chatting with me. Oh, look at that. That's a nice pink color, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Not bad. It's a little on the filthy side for my liking, but, you know, <laughs> you're just priming stuff. So get yeah. the rats out, right? Well, I'm priming it. It's going to have this color on it, which is actually kind of cool. Um, it just lets me see where I'm priming at. Gray on gray is not the greatest thing to prime. Um, keeps me from wasting paint. Normally, when I do something like this, I'm looking for wetness. I can see where it's wet, but just putting out such a fine mist. And this is actually, um, what I'll end up doing is after I prime and it dries, that's when I'll put the base coat on. Um, and I put it on with the airbrush as well. So uh, I'm trying to figure out what color I'm going to base coat it in. So I figured this is going to be a more civilized dragon. I'm thinking about going with lighter reds. Uh, for him, maybe. Not really sure just yet. Oh, that's cool, though, because you have no preconceptions on how it's all going to work out, so it'll sort of emerge on its own from your ponderings and testing with paint and stuff. So, yeah, it's going to end up cool. I like the figure a lot, I have to say. Yeah, it's uh, the thing with it being a young dragon, it is a smaller model. Um, which I think is best to paint online. I was telling Chuck about it. He's like, so are you going to prune a dragon off? I'm like, no, I just told you I ordered one. Um, I do have the model that Fat Dragons Games uh, sells. 
So they're a great dragon, and I've printed it off. It takes about 48 hours to print. Whew. It's pretty big too, but um, I always have issues when I print it. So that one's uh, that particular one is in parts, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's in like five parts. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited. I got the foundry license today. You want to help me set up a server? Mm, no. No. What? You don't want to help me set up a Linux server? No. Wait, don't you I already have a server set up so we can just use that? No. No. Yep, yep. I hear I hear you, the, the lion in your voice. Uh, I used to have one that uh, I tried it on and I couldn't run, uh, I couldn't get the instances to work, so I host it on Windows now. Uh... So how much RAM does it need to run? I believe it's at least uh, 256 per... 256 megs to run? Per... Uh, in I can't, man. It's either 256 or... So I can run it on a Raspberry Pi 4. I, like I said, you probably... You couldn't... I wouldn't recommend it. But I can, the one I'm looking at has got 8 gigs of RAM on it. I think Those Pi 4s do have a lot of RAM, don't they? Yeah, yeah. you get an 8 gig Pi 4, and then uh, that'll have, uh, and then it'll also be like, uh, I can overclock it to like 2.18 gigahertz, and it's got a 64 bit processor. The only thing I'm worried about is if it if I can run it on an ARM processor versus um, not an ARM processor. So. Yeah, I don't I don't know if uh, I mean JavaScript will run on. I don't know if Node will run on ARM. I don't I don't know if you know. Never cared to look. Is it hackable? I don't know. Like, can I go in and edit the code? Uh, technically, yes. Okay. So is this Andrew guy a good guy? Have you talked to him before? Yeah, we've talked to him once. He seems all right. No complaints. I'm gonna tell him you complain. Oh. There we go. Well, like my buddy Scott is complaining about you. Say that you didn't help him when he needed help. Oh, they got a whole Discord full of people that'll help. Oh, they do? Yep, they sure do. I'm kind of excited about trying it. I mean, it's only a trial license. I mean, you don't want to try it out for time, and I guess I'll end up buying it. Oh, I ended up getting the good, the rest of the Goodman games. Um, um, Humble Bundle, by the way. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. See, that's what happens when I sell a house. I buy me some stuff. Yeah, we closed last Friday. That's good. Yeah. Look at that spider webbing. Uh, good news, worthy of congratulations. Yeah. Our, uh, our realtor ended up buying it from us. I don't know, I'm kind of excited about that because I'm trying to get away from fantasy grounds. Don't tell Chuck that. You know, I know how much he loves it.
painting, airbrushing away. Sorry, man. It's uh, hard to make out what you're saying because, like you said, the noise. I know, and man. Also, it is very mesmerizing. <laughs> I'm just looking at how the uh, new coat of paint uh, kind of helps. I don't know why, because, I mean, you know, white is, really, is kind of a colory kind of thing, but it, uh, maybe it's just the methodology of what you paint first and what you proceed to fill in, really noticing a lot of the details right now. Yeah, um, it's hard with the primer to notice a lot. And you notice how I kind of follow, like, certain areas, and then I start filling it in. That's actually how I shadow as well. I'll show you on these wings when I get to them. So let's just get this in here. Uh oh, somebody opened the door. There's the wife again. See, my wife is a morning person. So if she has caffeine at night, she goes into overdrive and starts cleaning. So I, I made sure I got her a Pepsi at dinner. So manipulative, I mean, attentive. Yeah. I'm that type of husband. Ah, I like this your idea. I wonder if I could get the cat to clean the house overnight instead of tearing the place up if I feed her caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the edge of the wing. I you sound like you've tried that unsuccessfully already. Yeah. Phew. The cool thing about yeah. airbrushing though is it does kind of dry fairly quick. But you got to be very careful with it because it's a very thin coat anyway. It is an interesting color. Almost got it. Almost got it. Okay. So did you finish up the Necromundo? Uh, the Necron. They're over here. I've got a clear coat over here. And then base them. I've got to try to get these done. So I can get them shipped out this week. Ah, look right there. I didn't notice some. There's a line right there. They're sitting over here though. They're, they're next. Clear coat is probably going to be tomorrow. Then I got to put all the basic material on them. Uh, almost. Get in there. Get your mouth clean. And their horns. Come on now. Yes, I'll take a break for a second and then scrape it with my fingernail. Because I find a line that I'm trying to clean up. So how many of these coats will you apply? Uh, primer coat, just one. Base coat will be next. Even though the coats appear to be pretty thin, is that a problem that they tend to build up fast and obscure detail? No, not with airbrushing. That's why you, like, airbrushing is more like glazing. Um, depends on how thick you want to put it on here. Okay, I'll show you some tricks here in a minute. Uh, 
It's like, no, I've got paint build up and I don't want to do anything. Sorry, I'm kind of, we've got what's called dry tip. That's where paint builds up on the tip. And you got to get it off there. Dry tip. That's a pretty good number of minutes in a row of painting, though, before you have to start worrying about that. Yeah. So we'll take the. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. See how there's like a little buildup of paint at the tip here? Gotta get it off. way to do that is just come in here like this clean it off there and come in here like this just scrape it off with your thumb pray you ain't got a lot of it in here <laughs> in the inside of it and then we just screw it back on now you don't need the guard to actually airbrush some people prefer doing it without regard. Okay. So now this will also, as you said, it brings out definition. So this will let, allow me to see where I've messed up at. Like in my scraping. So what I will do is disconnect my quick release. Put the bottom of the airbrush back together. And set the airbrush in my paint pot like this. Okay. So, then I'll come in here and find the areas that I need to clean it up at. Like, this is going to be hard to get this area too much right here. Just because it's the way it is with the molding here. But, one of the main areas I was kind of concerned with, concerned with, since it's in the front, is this area right here. I'm already dropped off. You got internet lag, private. Uh oh. What color should I paint his belly? <laughs> what a great question. Oh, hush. Dump this right here. Whoops. Uh, get my nasty paper towel. Get out any excess. Squirt a little bit of that wonder juice in. Bloop. Blow it out. Well, I had to hook it up to blow it out. Come on, Bake. You're being awfully quiet today. Oh, I, uh, eat. Yeah, I'm just out of it. <laughs> Chuck, make you sad today? We'll blame, nah. it. We'll blame it on Chuck. I'm surprised you ain't here yet. He don't come in here and watch me. He likes to say he does just to make me happy, but he's mad at me, by the way. Pet 
hell yellow or gold? Yeah, he's mad because I ain't playing this weekend. Because I am going to be in Charlotte. Oh, man. Still getting weird lag. I thought I'd uh, get out of here for a second and see if it improved it at all. And it wasn't. It was hard following what you were doing because yes. video and audio weren't synced up at all. Like your audio on, in Discord versus the actual audio in the chat or in the Twitch. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to start working on the wings. So I've got my red loaded. What the heck? It's like spitting. It's spitting! It's spitting! There we go. Ah! That's really starting to fog up now. Let's thin it down just a little bit more. I don't think it's a thinner issue. That gumbo. There we go. Better? A little bit. A little bit. So, over the spines of the wings here, it's going to be a little bit of a lighter red because it's thinner, which is fine because I'm going to paint over them. I want them to be a little darker, but not too much darker. Yeah, the more you can get done with the airbrush, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. But I'm just now starting to get okay with the airbrush. And that's only because I've been challenging myself to work with it more. And when I get to a point where I think I'm great with it, that's when I'm going to upgrade my airbrush. I want that Badger Patriot. <laughs> I almost bought it this week, though. It's the first time I've really ever considered painting models with an air breath. I've always thought in terms of paintbrushes. Yeah, well, base coating, like, especially things that are fleshy, you know, like a monster or something. Airbrush is rock because you can blend stuff in a little bit better. Come on now. 
Come on. Oh, I got a leak. That's what's going on. <sighs> there we are. I know this is so entertaining. I had a friend who's, uh, I mean, you know, he, he was straight up, he was a master level painter. And, uh, he retired because of, uh, I mean, he doesn't even do it as a hobby anymore because it's not what God had planned for him. Um, but I've been trying to get him to get back into it. I'd be like, man, you should do some uh, dioramas of biblical settings. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just flat out no. Yeah. <clears throat> like, but dude, man, he was like one of the best. So why won't he uh, do even that then? Well, it's just because... Partially because, it, one, it's a hobby that you've got to keep up. This is something you've got to... It's like... Like, before I picked the brush book, I took a break for almost... I want to say eight years. I mean, I'd still paint things off and on. It's just I wasn't heavy into painting armies and stuff like that. And it was mainly because I was in school... Um, you know, and dealing with little kids and things like that. And, uh, but like, it took me to get back to where I was before I took that break. It took me a, a fairly amount, large amount of time, like a couple of months at least. He's been out of it now for over a year, but he, you know, he's in the ministry and he doesn't have time for it, is what he's saying. So. Okay, well, you know, that's legit for sure. I yeah. just wondered what it was. Especially when you say he's he's been out of it for only a year, I'm thinking, well, wow, you were out of it for eight years, and he's been out of it for a year. Surely a year isn't that hard to insurmount. Yeah, but, I you know, if, if his priorities have changed, then he's got other things that take up his time. Yeah, and meaningful. Well, you know, it's hard to argue with that. It's just like, he's got a, he's got a really good testimony, too. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of um, chronic fatigue syndrome. Oh, yeah. So he had chronic fatigue syndrome. Like, they didn't know what was causing it and um, things like, like that. And he started going to this church that, you know, kind of preached healing. And, you know, and he started going to this past talking to this pastor about it and praying over and over and it just went away and like it that wasn't the only thing it went away like his blood pressure normalized his cholesterol normalized um i mean it's just insanity of everything that's going on in his life it's changed you know and uh so and he takes it, he thinks of this representing part of an older life that he put behind him and better just life for, I yeah. don't know. Well, and also, like, like the question was brought up, because he's painting a lot of Warhammer stuff, so his monsters and things like that, and his wife's like, do you really want to paint evil and stuff? He's like, no. <laughs> I was like, well, that's yeah. a point. That'd be useful. Oh, come on now. Ah. All right. So, last bit of this red that we're going to be needing for a while. This is Mephistion red. It's one of my favorite reds to use. Come on now. Alright. 
So, when I dump this, wipe this out. My finger's starting to get chafed a little bit. Yeah, That's, that airbrush will do it. <laughs> dude, man. Yeah. Like, when I had to prime all these Necrons, oh, man. I couldn't use my finger for like a, a week. I know it sounds dumb, but like, it hurt. I, uh, I found a way to do it with my hands to use my thumb on the trigger. Really? And that seemed to, yeah, that seemed to help. Some sort of monkey grip or something? And, yeah. Pretty much. So now and, we're loading uh, up some Evil Sun Scarlet. This is a layer color from Citadel that pairs well with the uh, other color we just had. So. Mephistion. You stir it up a little bit, mix up the what's in the pot. Okay. Oh, come on. Might just have to give up. We got 45 more minutes. Oh, man, is it that thick? Oh yeah, the scarlet is uh, pretty thick. Now I've got too much in it. Now are you using thinner or the flow improver? I use uh, airbrush thinner. Oh, okay. Use the though. flow improver. That seems to help a lot too. No. There we go. Nah. There we go. But I also don't. I don't paint up as far close as you you get really in there remember what I said about going over the areas nah yeah <laughs> Can you tell the difference between those two colors? Does that look okay? Uh... Yeah... Yeah, once it starts getting over that primer, yeah. Up. I need to check and see how much Scarlet I've got. <laughs> Ever since Ninth Edition came out, I get more points, so I'm gonna build about <laughs> 20 more, 20 more Marines. They're just trying to sell more paint. <laughs> I had them in a box, and I'm like, Ugh. I guess it's time to bring them back out. I guess I got enough. If I had a yeah, budget, yeah. what should I buy? For what? Warhammer? No, for this, this, this show. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. How's that what look? What a fantastic question. Yeah, that looks better once it's covering up the primer getting blended in there. What if I could paint this whole thing with an airbrush? Oof. Now I had to switch fingers because I'm getting chafed. <laughs> Is 
does take a hot minute though. Oh my gosh. I love it though. Seem to have a little bit different control with this. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, at that distance, it's definitely a good thing. What a biscuit! Okay. Like a Bojangles chicken biscuit or something. Ooh. All right, all right. I go down there every time I go down to see my sister in Charleston. Seems like it's slow going. Whew. Come on. Uh, it's gonna take two sessions, man. I feel like I'm a crappy tattoo artist. <laughs> oh, you're making me cry. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna upset the uh, tattoo artist. We got the lines in. You gotta come back after it heals so we can color <laughs> it in. No, but seriously, um, you know, you don't have to devote entire sessions to this. No, I mean, yeah. I ain't got nothing else to I've got other things you have to work on, too, so, like, give your hands a break and do different things if you want. That's fine. This is very cool to watch, though. I'm getting hungry, yeah. though. It's, Let's see you paint your nails, Daniel. Almost time to end the show. It's almost time for popcorn, huh? I don't know if I'm going to do popcorn tonight or not. Oh, uh, what is this? Hell has frozen over. Well, I, you know, I've been doing the popcorn in the kettle. Yeah. So, and I've been eating it a lot lately. And since uh, Halloween, I gained a couple pounds. Uh, just have to break bad and make some microwave popcorn. Nope. <laughs> Hot garbage. Mm, mm. I know the voice of an addiction when I hear one. <laughs> it does hot garbage! My, I'm going to put that on my, my shopping list. What, hot garbage? Yep. I'm with my uh, ranch dressing. Pop. It's disgusting. Mmm. Mmm. Here, let's do it. It's done. I'm gonna monkey it like you do. Yeah, wrap. Yeah, wrap your thumb up against the. Yeah, like that. And uh, takes a little adjustment, but your thumb will figure it out. That's what she said. Be ashamed of yourself. Family channel. What? Who said that? <laughs> Listen, if this was a family channel, Steven Chenault would not be on here. Well, there's that too.
So I did order. Uh, so I, my wife lets me pick out what I want for Christmas. Cause she 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 doesn't know what to get me. Like, cause it's always RPG stuff or gaming stuff or computer stuff. So I got a drone. I ordered a drone. An entry level drone. It's 150 bucks. But um, I ordered the last two uh, reincarnation books from Goodman Games. Like the Amber Castle. I can't remember what the other one was. I'm excited about those. Yeah, I don't know anything about Goodman. So Goodman Games took the, uh, some of the older D&D stuff and, um, and took in, um, redid it. And mm. like they, they, they did some scans of the actual, of the actual, uh, modules and then it was modules that were really left open-ended so they went in and added more to them and okay. and did it for fifth edition so and so I they can, took the old stories and put, okay gotcha. yeah added to it and, and and did it out for fifth edition so look at that it's so pretty Them wings, like chicken wings. <laughs> that uh, I see a spot I missed. Take uh -uh. Ruh -roh. Hmm, I'm gonna see what this color looks like mixed up. So Iverlin Sunset, which is a ochre. Some people say it's yellow. So I'm gonna dump this. Yellow brown. Whoops. Leave that in there. Look at that mess. Okay. Shoot a little bit of this Averlin sunset in. Well, let's clear the clog. Boom. Okay. And drop some Averlin sunset in. Okay. Which is a base color. So if you ever want a yellow that coats like really good, it's Averlin sunset. Like, you would put that down as your base color, and then you would add your regular yellows on top of it. Okay. So we're a little red. We've got a little bit of red going on here. Shoot a little bit of this thinner in. Dirty paint water. Adds that special touch to it. Good, though. Make a nice uh, color. Yeah. There we go. Get the monkey hand going on. <laughs> It's how your neighbors hold their cookery. Oh, it's not going to work. And I've already messed it up. It's too opaque. Oh, mercy Jesus, help me. I'll have to let that dry. Not really. This is how I clean my airbrush. Let's throw it in there. All right, I'll just recoat that with that other color as soon as this dries up. That's the cool thing about it going on so thin. If you screw something up like that, you can just add it again. I just wanted to see if I could highlight it with the Iverlin Sunset that it would lift it up some color, but it was too bright. So now what we'll end up doing next is we'll be taking, um, this is when we'll actually be doing this by hand. Take like a little bit of this Evil Sun Scarlet. We'll put it right there because I don't feel like getting the tile out right now. Taking the really good paintbrush. Where's it at? Here you go, really good paintbrush. There you are. Licking it, getting me a point. And then we'll come in and get each one. Well, the V, con conservated Vs or whatever Trogdar says. Consecutive V's. Trogdor the Burninator! It's Trogdor. So we'll do the bottom of each scale. Like so. See what I'm doing here?
So what we'll end up doing is taking that, that Evil Suns and putting it on there. And then we'll hit it with a little bit of yellow, maybe, to highlight. And then what I'll end up doing is thinning down that Evil Suns the best I can. And then I put it all over everything. Or all over the skin. And what that does is create a blend. I've learned this technique this week. So, I think I'm going to cut it early, guys. Oh, look. I got a new wedding band, by the way. Check that out. Oh, I, yeah. I was going to say something. What was admiring you earlier, brother? It actually fits. <laughs> you know how much it cost me? Everybody take a guess. I don't know. It's deer antler. Deer antler. And tungsten carbide. Wow. Custom made or did you pick it up off shelf? Uh, I got it off shelf. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. <laughs> oh, I figured you were going to brag about the price being like lower than usual, but... Yeah, that's lower than I would have thought. Still yeah. nice looking ring, though. I know. Well, so I, I don't like wearing gold. I used to wear a lot of silver, but um, the issue, I just don't like gold, the color of it. I like having gold in the house, but I don't like the color of it as jewelry. So I like different other things, so I'll look for it. And I was looking at Masonic rings the other day, and then I was like, oh, let's look at wedding bands. And I saw, that's a wicked looking wedding band and so my old wedding band doesn't fit anymore because i've lost a lot of weight so i was like i need a new wedding band. i didn't like wearing wedding bands after that because it just it was so loose it would fall i'd be walking swinging my arms all here i hear a ding 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 or it just hits the ground and rolls across the road that's too funny and i told my wife i said now you're gonna have to worry and she's like why's that i said well I'm going to have all these women chasing me because now they'll see a wedding band on my hand. So, be like, <laughs> listen, that guy right there, he's taken. I bet you I can get him away from his wife. I said, so you don't have to worry about that. And she's like, no, I'm not. I was like, okay. I love my wife. You want to go it. back and be flinging it off in front of the crowds of women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, well. But yeah, so anyway, uh, everybody, thanks for joining us tonight, and thank you all for listening to me ramble and shoot this airbrush, and we're going to let this guy dry up a little bit so I can handle him better, and then fix the wings where I screwed him up, and then, uh, yeah, uh no. huh? Good. Somebody say something? What now? No, I don't know. Anyway, all uh, right, well, I'll holler at you all later, guys. Oh, good night.